What's up, everyone? Back for another episode. Tonight we got a big episode. We got former Notre Dame linebacker, current NFL player, Tavon Coney. How we doing tonight? I'm doing good. Can't complain. Um, you know, on this, this great Monday, just got done working out and got some food in me. Um, you know, just going to relax right now, uh, do some research. But, you know, just can't complain, man, taking things day by day. I feel that. I feel that. Uh, we also want to put a plug into your uh, foundation. I'm wearing the sweatshirt. You got a shirt on. Olena's got a hat on. You want to tell everyone a little about your foundation? Yeah, man. Um, tough choice. I started my foundation last year. Um, you know, really a, a nonprofit, really for uh, the youth, really for, you know, kids that are struggling in, um, you know, poverty areas and poverty communities that need the guy that's needed, need, need mentoring, um, need support and resources to help them get to you know, their ultimate goals that they have like anybody else. And, you know, that's something that I know that's very viable to the communities and very important. You know, that's something for the position I am now I want to be able to use to be able to give back, be able to use to change uh, other people's lives. And that's why I started Tough Choices in the clothing line to give, you know, give kids an empowerment, give people something to live for to know that we all got to make the tough choices to keep moving forward to make our dreams come true. And, you know, just having that support and having a team and a family of people you feel like you can count on support on, um, man, that's sometimes the biggest thing. That's all, that's all sometimes you need. Yeah, for sure. It's awesome. And we, like I said, I, the sweatshirts are very comfortable. It's a great cause. Uh, in, in our uh, description, we'll put the link to your website. We'll tweet out your link too. So everyone can go check it out. Donate to a good cause while getting some nice gear to wear around. Sure, All right. Sure. So you are from Florida. Yes, sir. What made a kid from Florida want to go all the way up north to Notre Dame? Man, I know that's probably one of the most common questions I get. I actually love it. Right. Man. This day, I come and I kind of ask myself that, man. It was truly a, a moment that I, I prayed on and I thought about for a really long time. Um, and I think it was something I really needed. Today, I'm, I'm truly thankful as I'm standing here today that I, I made that decision when I was 17 to go to Notre Dame. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was much different, but I think that was something I needed, which was growth, uh, you know, seeing more, seeing what life was really about, uh, you know, being right. around a school of people who cared about you, who's going to put you in a situation where you leave um, to prepare you for what your dreams and your goals. Um, and that was something I felt like Notre Dame was going to do. And, you know, it was kind of scary to make the decision to do it. But like I said, I prayed on it. And you know, it was something I felt like was, was the best for my future and for my family. And, you know, I decided to do it. And now I'm to this day happy I did it, man. But the biggest thing for me was I was thankful to have the support um, that I had with my family and in and, and school um, to make mm -hmm. the transition. You know what I mean? And, yeah. you know, just thanking God for being able to just, you know, put me in a position and, and being with me as well. And, you know, it was a tough decision. I, I always tell people it was a tough decision, man. But to me, it was really just taking that next step to really change my life. Right. So, yeah, uh, no. so where would where were you uh, finaling or your final choices coming down to? Who was who else was involved in that in that uh, final couple of teams that you had on the list there? Yeah. So yeah, I, I had like a ton of teams, but I really might. So the funny thing is, I wasn't going to leave the state of Florida, man, unless my mom. Uh, my mom said I couldn't leave the state of Florida unless I wanted to go to Notre Dame, unless she wanted me to go to Notre Dame. So oh, really? The three schools okay. was either Florida, Miami, and Notre Dame. Those are three schools the whole time I was okay. going to go to. Um, and I decided, man, um, if I don't if I don't go to Notre Dame, there's no point in leaving the state of Florida. I might as well go to Florida Gators, or, which is my favorite school, or, or go to Miami, stay close to home. You know, for me, and, you know, the biggest thing I think that separated was Notre Dame was that, the culture and that, uh, you know, it's really what they offer, you know, education and just yeah. the support system. It was, it was just unmatched, you know what I mean? So that was for me taking the jump. But, you know, not if I didn't go to Notre Dame, I was going to just stay close to home for Florida, Miami, and, you know, just be close to my family, be in a more comfortable environment around people that, you know, kind of like for me, it was like similar versus going to Notre Dame. It was more diverse, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it was a little bit different um, for me, big climate change. Never had seen snow before. So that was different. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, all those little things that, you know, you kind of take for granted when you live in Florida or other areas. Um, mm -hmm. When you make that type of transition, those can be the kind of downfalls if you let it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah I'm just thankful and blessed, man, for the situation, how it turned out. You hate the cold? Because I lived in South Bend my whole life. I hate the cold. Man, like, now I'm just, like, thankful for it. I experienced it. I got through it. Yeah. So now I'm like, man, it ain't that bad. You know, you just got to get through it, you know, but for me, like you told me before, um, I, I went to Notre Dame, man. I'm like, man, I'm not going no cold. Like, right, so yeah, yeah. There, just having that open mindset, you know, about when you travel to other countries, you know, a lot of people understand that, like, it'd be cold in other countries if you go, like, in some right. time of the year. 
So just different stuff like that or just having that experience of what it means. Like, you know, to like a lot of our friends now never see the snow. And look at them now, like it's crazy, but I was there once too. You know what I mean? So just mm -hmm. being able to experience something like that, I feel like it's always good just so you know. But, you know, like I say, having that experience where you always live in it, you kind of look at it different. But a lot of people are just like, never even don't even know what snow feel like how crazy is right that? yeah like, yeah you know? for sure it's like different perspectives like that if you look at it from your perspective it's just like all right whether you've been in it a long time or you've never been in it, those two different big perspectives you know what i mean so yeah definitely, kind of, definitely. Kind of in the middle with it. so uh i always wonder this too so you're a very highly recruited athlete when you got to notre dame i, I mean i know you cut you know going in like there's obviously going to be guys just as good as you but you obviously always in your head also think like, yeah, I'm the best, you know, I'm the best. And was there a time or a practice where you're like, cause you know, in high school, you're going to be the best player on the field every time, you know? And then you get to Notre Dame. Is there like a time where you're, where you were like, was it like your freshman year early or like a practice? But like when you were like, damn, okay. Like it's going to make me get so much better. Cause every day I'm going up against guys who I know are like just as good or who are pushing me to get better, you know, is I can't take a play off and still be the best player on the field. Uh, I know for me, it was just like, I feel like it was like a, almost like a roller coaster. I learned a lot. It had its ups and its downs. And for yeah. me, I was just really thankful for it all because even in the downs, um, you know what I mean? It, it helped me kind of build back up like that character yeah. building. Knowing like you got to fight through adversity, you know what I mean? Even though like when you feel like you're the best, but other people around you, or you might not be getting the credit for it, like fighting through that, you know what I'm saying? Knowing that like one day people will see it, knowing one day you'll get what you deserve. Um, just different stuff like that. Um, so it's just like, for me, even to this day, I'm just battling that, of uh, those, those ups and downs of, you know, knowing your confidence and knowing that you're always the best player, but yeah. seeing how things can be reality, it can always go up and down when you're playing sports. You know what I mean? So for sure, it's like for me, it was like really find that moment where I was like, man, like I'm always confident in myself, no matter what. Like I know, like with like within time, it's gonna all subside. Where like I'm right where I need to be at, playing, starting in the right spot, doing the thing I need to do on the field. Like it's just like it's really a timing thing, and that was just something that I feel like I had to learn. More so, like than like being hard on myself. Right. No, that's that's definitely a very fair point. So, you you played for a, a few different defensive coordinators while at Notre Dame. Um, it seems like that may have, like your stint, your four years there may may have been um, the most D coordinators in a four year span that I can remember. Anyway, who was your favorite out of those that you had, and, and why? Why do you like them the most? Uh, I'll probably say Clark Lee, man. Um, just like one of the first coaches, like, you know what I mean, who came across, um, cared more about football, cared more about you as a human being, cared more about how you feel and, you know, the things that can help you as a man to be a good father, be a good person in the community, be a good person in, in, the, in the world. And that was something that, like, really touched me is that, like, you know, having a coach that cared more about, like, what you could do on the football field, but um, more, bigger than that. And I think that was the biggest thing that, really made us grow really more and, and it actually benefited more on the football field because then we had a close relationship, you know? So most times you think that the field is like where you build a relationship, but it's sometimes like off the field and having those moments and having somebody actually like just care for you as a person outside of football, you know, when life is actually going up and down, like I said before, you know what I mean? So just having a coach that actually care about you, I mean, I, as a football player for me, man, that means everything, just knowing that this coach actually you know, care for me. Yes, you're going to, like, pick up my phone call if I call at night and I got a conversation about something else that doesn't have something to do with football. For me as a player, right. that's, like, always something you want. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's your coach to actually care about you more than just, like, a, a jersey number. Um, you know, so that was somebody, like, that I really felt like, you know, I had that real connection with, and it, and it helped me play better as well, like, over the time. Nice. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, so while at Notre Dame, uh, you're, uh, when you guys – or your year when you guys played at Miami, did that one sting like crazy? Because, I mean, you're from Florida. It was one of your final three schools. And, you know, at that point, you guys were riding high. Uh, did that, like, really down for a second? Because you're like, damn, I want to go back to Florida and show out. But, I mean, did it fuel a little bit for your next year? Um, what was, like, your thought process after that? Yeah, man, I mean, you know, it's football. You know, and I, I, at first I took it a little bit to heart kind of that day. You know, but I, I, you know, I realized that, you know, it was just a game that, you know, I had my own personal beef. Even to this day, I laugh about my friends, like, man, I just wish we would have won that game. But right. know, I had a great game, but nah, man, I wish, I really wish I could, we could have pulled that one off. But, uh, you know, the, it, I know that 
it's all ups and downs with the game, man. You know, and that's something that I've learned over time and take time. But uh, no, I mean, I would say overall, at first I was kind of hurt about it, but like looking back at it now, it's like it was just another experience, man, of going through that right. worship, You know what I mean? Something that you didn't expect. Right. Yeah, most definitely. So speaking of the uh, the battling through adversity, um, obviously a loss is going to give you the toughest lesson within that. But in the in your senior year, the 2018 season, when um, things started off great at, after that Michigan game, um, then there was some adversity with I, the next few games, Ball State, uh, Vandy, and um, – they were closer games. Would you say those, like, coming out on top in those games kind of propelled you guys to, uh, like, I guess kind of made the team a little bit tougher to uh, come out in those close games to then propel that 12-0 season at the end? Yeah, for sure, man. I, I think uh, just that for everyone, that's the moment to grow, a moment to kind of come together, like I was saying, a moment to kind of count on your brothers. And those are the best times you want to live for. That's the times you train for, it, man. So, you know, for us, it was like, some that kind of made us stronger. And, you know, some I always tell, you know, my teammates and people I care about is to use this as a moment to more than life, more than just football, you know, to use this as a time when, you, when you're when you down to just keep fighting, man. That's what real life is really about. And you know, that's something that I always preach to them, even on the sideline, was just keeping our head up, even when we were up, that we had to keep the right mindset, like like we were down, you know, and staying level here. That was something I always told my teammates and guys I played with, man. I think that's something that we was able to adopt that season, and that's what kind of helped us push forward from there. Yeah, that was – I mean, that was one of my favorite seasons, being a fan. Um, did you see from year one to year four – so obviously uh, year four you guys are able to make the playoffs. Did you see kind of – or did you think you guys always had the talent? Or did you see kind of each year, like, you guys – you think you guys were closing the gap on the elite because you guys were getting better and better each year? You know, like, you were – even when you guys lost to Miami that year, you guys had a great year too. So, did you kind of feel a sense of, like, each year, like, okay, we are getting closer to this gap that we're fighting for? Yeah, man. I, no, I, th- I think it was always something we had uh, from coming in. Uh, I always thought Notre Dame had the talent. They did a great job recruiting – and everything mm-hmm. just really building that uh building that camaraderie, building that uh standard and um of the program, building that standard within the coaches and within the players of coming together and playing for each other and trusting each other. And I think that, you know, we had a little bit of change in D coordinate like you talked about before and yeah. you know, coaches and stuff like that. And sometimes that can be a uh, you know, up and down, you know what I mean? That's how we kinda of struggled in two thousand sixteen with the coaching change and Different right. stuff. But you know, it was something like I said we was able to battle through and I think that was we always had the talent and it was just putting it all together, man, that we was able to trust the coaches. We had great coaches that came in. I think they did a great job at turning the program around, uh, letting the co- players know that, that they care about. I think that was the biggest change. And for us, it was something that we stuck to and told each other we was going to play for each other. And we did that and we got good results those next two years. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. And, and Notre Dame typically is a, a higher ranked preseason team. And I think um, the, the 2008 season probably su- surprised a lot of the I don't want to say Notre Dame haters, but just the the non-believers that um, th- that season wouldn't be the one in particular where you guys were going to make it all the way to the, the college football playoff. But speaking on that game, um, at the on the Clemson game in the playoff, what? How do you how do you remember that game? Like, what's your your takeaways from like what? I guess what happened in in your own words in that game? Yeah, I mean it is. Like I say, like like any other game, it's a game of competition where you know the the opponent got the best of us. The opponent won, and you know they find a way to come together and play a great game. And you know we didn't play well that night, and you know that's something that we gotta live with to this day. But I mean, I think we accomplished a lot. I think we learned a lot that, like I said, we can move forward with our lives and in the competitive world of football as well. So you know, for me, it was just a moment that we. We had the experience we went through, and you know I know it, it's helped a ton of players that stayed for next year and they went off to the league as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Did, speaking of that game, that kick kickoff, the ball was never out of bounds, correct? Yeah, no, that was a tough one, right there, man. Yeah, that was, yeah, that, was, that that was such that was, a bad call. But um, transitioning from that, uh, preparing for the NFL, how was that different? from just a regular practice at Notre Dame or, like, going through spring ball? Um, I mean, I'm assuming it's a lot less tackling and hitting and drills like that and more of 
40 yard dashes and all that type of stuff. So what was the preparation different for training for the NFL and preparing for the NFL than like going through a spring practice? Um, I would say just in general, just more specific needs, uh, you know, being more of a professional and figuring out kind of what you need uh, specifically for you to be prepared uh, to reach that next level. Um, more so, you know, in college, you're obviously training to get better, but you're training more as a team. You're training, for, you're training with the – to create that team bonding, to know how to work with each other, know how to create that leadership, you know. So it's just a different atmosphere, man, just a different level of ball, you know. So that's going to require you doing something different, you know what I mean? You, you can't do the same uh, at those two levels of the game, you know what I mean? I think that's just the biggest thing. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely. Um, try, kind of to circle back to Notre Dame, I wanted to ask you one more question about Notre Dame before we start getting into the professional career. Um, would you say you had a favorite moment or what was your favorite moment? Maybe your favorite game or both if, you have, if they're two separate. Uh, what was your favorite moment your, while your while your time in Notre Dame? Um, I'll probably just say my, my two, uh, 2017, we played USC. I think the first snap of the game, I had to uh, strip the ball from US, from um, Sam Darnold. Uh, I'll probably say it was like the best moment just from – being able to uh, know that that was like one of the biggest weeks of my uh, life in college, where you know I had I wanted to have a good game. I was just I was starting that game. Uh, and I knew it was a big one of our biggest rivals at home. We had to win, and you know watching tape all that week with my coach, and you know telling me I can get a script if I just get a chance to yank at it, yank at it, and you know just being able to take that coach and you know being blessed and going out there and making like one of the biggest plays in the game to start off to change the game and um, you know end up winning. Um, I'll probably say that's, like, one of the biggest things that really, like, propelled me to, you know, a great rest of my junior year to on to my senior year. So that was a great turning point for me. Yeah, that yeah. that USC at home, the atmosphere is, is something else. Like, was that yeah. under the lights, you remember, or no? Yeah, it was at, it was at 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah, I think I was at that. That, that, was, a, that was a hell of a game. That was awesome. So now transitioning to the NFL, uh, would you say practices are, like you said, preparing, are more detail-oriented? Are they harder or is it just a, like, it's a lot of knowledge. So you're just taking in more knowledge and all that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's kind of similar to college in the sense of, you know, when you get into that team aspect, it all, it all kind of applies to each other um, mm -hmm. as far as you know, knowing the plays and different stuff like that. That's, that's kind of all similar, man. I just think the level of play goes up or uh, the level yeah. of focus goes up. Uh, you know, different things like that, you know, it has to go up when we're talking about um, playing at the highest level. So I think those are the type of things that uh, change the game, man. It's just being focused, knowing what you have to do, knowing your assignments. And you know, I think that is the, the part that kind of turns up a lot where the accountability goes up to the roof. But, of course, when you're adding other aspects and, you know, it just – it changes a lot, you know what I mean? But yeah, it also makes sure. the game much, you know – front of two, you know, guys out there flying around playing, so, mm -hmm. you know, you got to love it. What's Coach Gruden like? So I always get that question, man. I feel like it's just yeah. like somebody got to just, just got to try to get that in. Well, wow, man, uh, he's a great <laughs> guy, man. He's a great coach. Uh, you know, really, really one of the best coaches I've ever been around, man. Um, I just say you're a great guy. Yeah. Nice. So were, were the Raiders a team that you were – um, a fan of growing up at all, or did you like? Did you have? Were you like kind of excited when? Obviously, you're going to be excited when you when you get signed. But um, did you have like any teams that were? I guess were they on the top of your list or anything like that, or were you just like, let's go? I'm I'm ready to go wherever. No, I mean, just kind of happy naturally with the Raiders. You know, I played with them in the Senior Bowl, so I had a, a little relationship with the coaches, and you know, just love what they were about, and uh, you know how they coach the ball, and you know how they even treat us at the seeing bowl before we were even any of us was their players. So, you know, that already kind of gave me a great uh, feeling from having that similar feeling from Notre Dame, too. So, you know, that opportunity to sign with them, uh, you know, I knew it was a great opportunity for me. Yeah, nice. for sure. John Gruden does love Notre Dame, so I can see how that – Yeah, I was just saying, well. he's, a, he's a South Bend guy, too. So, that – Yeah. That's good. Um, have you have you seen the new stadium at all? Or have, have any of you guys, like, been out there for anything like that? Yeah, I'm not sure. Some of the other guys probably have seen it. I haven't seen it yet, though. Gotcha. I, I was seeing you pitching and stuff, but I'm kind of just going to wait to catch it in person so I can be kind of shocked. Like, yeah. Kind of, right. Yeah. I'm, it I'm looks insane. Like, I don't we got to get out there. Yeah. 
Well, Lena, you got any more questions? I got a few fan questions. If you got want to answer, ask any more questions to finish it up. Okay, go, go ahead with those. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Uh, toughest player to play that you ever played against in college. Um. Toughest player I've ever played against in college. Uh, I'll say uh, the running back from LSU is probably a good competition. Um, he's a really good running back, really good hard runner. Um, yeah, I'll probably say uh, Geis. Uh, he's probably, yep. I'll probably say he's probably the best running back. I, Darius Geis, okay. I, pound for pound. He, he's a good athlete for sure. Who was the toughest player you went up against in practice? I'll probably say uh, old lineman, probably – uh, Quentin Nelson. Um, yeah. We always had some great fun battles. Uh, I love yeah. fun for a lot, especially the best. So I'll probably say I had some really good c- competition with him through the years of us playing there and having some fun with him. So yeah. I'll probably be playing. Right. Favorite South Bend bar after a victory? Man, actually, you know, I was actually young, so I didn't really go to bars at all. Um, oh. I didn't even turn 21 until after I left college, which is crazy. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, so uh, oh, for damn. Me, I didn't even I didn't even go to bars. I would say that I did go to a bar. Uh, what was it? Um, um, that had the wings. Uh, every Thursday, I went there one time. Um, it was right on Eddie Street. Um, Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I feel you that. So nice. Cool. Yeah, you can go. Yeah, you can get the food in there. That's crazy that you didn't turn twenty one until after school though. That's crazy. I know, right? So I yeah, I didn't. That is crazy. Bars, but. Yeah, I went there one time though. So I, I could say brothers are cool because the chicken the chicken wings is pretty was pretty good. Yeah, they're not bad. Yeah, they and then good. the last the last one was toughest player you played against in high school. Uh toughest player I played against in high school. Um who that's a tough one. Um man, who did I play in high school? It was kind of good. Uh oh, Amar Richardson, uh receiver. Um played at Miami, uh Hurricanes, uh, before he got hurt, he was a, came out 2016 receiver. He's really okay. good. You know, he was like a rival school, uh, yeah, so twice a year. So I would say he was like the guy where, like, I had to even try to go out there and try to stop him, make, make him stop catching the ball. So, right, yeah, I, that was a guy that like really tried to like affect us from like losing the game. Like, we actually lost a playoff game because like our corners couldn't stop him. Like, oh, like, really? Okay, yeah. damn. So I'll probably say he, I had to give it to him because I've never played somebody like change the game that much. Right, where you, yeah, damn, that's crazy. Do you have a, uh, do you have like a funny Coach Kelly moment, like before he <laughs> kind of ch- changed his temper a little bit? Like he, he used to kind of blow up on the sidelines a little bit. Did you ever get some funny interactions with maybe like you weren't directly involved, but he like blew up on somebody else or something like that, like a funny moment like that? Man, um, uh, I've, 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 I've had so many, man. I just think. The biggest thing was just, like, his coaching style was always funny because, like, every time he yelled at you, he always made a joke. You know, to make you feel good. <laughs> you always, like, laugh to know that, like, everything's going to be good. Just, like, you know, yeah. you do it But, like, you know, this like, he cared about you and, like, you know, make you smile, too. So, it was always, like, in the middle where, like, you didn't know if he was mad about the play because he always cracked a joke with you, too. You know, to make you feel mm-hmm. good. So, it was always, like, sometimes yeah. I didn't know, like, if he was still mad at me about the play or if it was, like, cool because he made a joke. So, Right. Probably, that was like the biggest thing. <laughs> nice. Two things. What's your prediction on the Irish this year? How do you think they'll do? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't even looked much into it this year so far. Uh I they got some I know a couple of guys are still there. Uh so you know Ian Book's still gonna do his thing, man. So I'm I'm hoping they can get probably eleven and one. I'm hoping they can put a good season out this year. There you go. And what do you want to tell people about you coming up? What what have you been doing, putting that work? You know, what do you want to tell people for you and your season coming up and your future coming up? Yeah, man, just working day to day. Uh, you know, get myself in a position to be ready when when it's time to play. Uh, you know, working on my foundation is the biggest thing I've been doing off the field, outside of working out. You know, work out twice a day. You know, just really grinding. Um, get myself prepared to have a really good season, man, and really make a stamp in the, in the NFL and, and, and get my name out there. So let, let everyone know, man, I could, I could play ball uh, with, with the big guys. And, you know, that's something that I've just been able to have my chip on my shoulder. I'm just continuing to work hard and not complaining. And I know, like, I, like what happened before, that the time is going to come and I'll be ready to play. And, uh, you know, just really giving back to the community and um, giving my blessings back for what I'm receiving each and every day, man, and just being thankful for everything. And just working hard and, you know, just doing what I can do. 
Oh, yeah. that. We're we're uh we're definitely looking. Cause I'm a, I'm actually a Raiders fan, so we're looking to go out to uh, a game for uh, the the new stadium and whatnot. So hopefully you're able to get out there when we when we stop out there. We were thinking about the yeah. uh, the Saints game, right, Michael? Wasn't that? Yeah, Monday night game. Yeah, the Monday night game in, in September. So yeah, we hope to see you out on the field during that. That'd be awesome. Yes, sir. No, nah, man. I'm, I'm praying, man. Everything goes well. God willing, um, we'll be in Vegas, man. I better catch up with you guys. Uh, um, ready to bring your tough choice gear out there, man. And, yeah, know, for sure. Look fun, man. I, my face would be a little bit, uh, I guess, in the clear as far as, you know, being out there, get my feet wet. So, we better go get some food. Right. Um, uh, hang out, man. Better catch you guys in person. So, man, hopefully everything time up right. Uh, yeah. You guys can get out to Vegas, man. We can have a little fun and get some food, man, since we'll be celebrating in Vegas. Hell yeah. For sure, for sure. Last uh, last thing, you want to plug your uh, – uh, the foundation one more time. Tough choices. Everyone uh, go yeah, follow. Man. Tough choices. Uh, we got my my Instagram is tough choices. Tough dot choices uh, on Instagram. Um, follow me on T- Tavon Coney on Facebook and Twitter. Um, but yeah, the tough choices dot com. Tough just tough choices foundation dot com is the website. Uh, you know where we're gonna like keep updates about what we're gonna do once Corona kind of clears up. We got a lot of events that. We're gonna, kind of going to be giving back supplies to kind of get everybody back on their feet uh, coming from out of the corona. So, you know, plan some things for that right now and, uh, you know, really having a pair of stuff for, you know, people to have and, you know, be able to wear and be able to, you know, kind of uh, go towards some of the events and stuff that we're doing once everything kind of clears up with the corona right now, you know, trying to be safe with that. But, you know, just uh, really just keep in touch with what's going on and, you know, tough trust. You got a lot of big things in store to man, um, change a lot and, you know, change the community and, give the kids the opportunity to make their dreams come true like I got. Perfect. Once again, it's a great foundation. We'll put that link in our description and everything. We'll tag all of the uh, Twitter and Instagram ads for you to go follow. Hey, we appreciate you coming on, man. We're glad you did it. Good luck this year, man. We're cheering for you. you, We'll talk to you soon. Yep. All right now.